Hello and welcome to the debate. I'm your host, Anama Kool, with you at PTV World. In today's show, we're going to be taking a look at two important stories. Uh, the first is with reference to what is going on in the U.S. As, of course, uh, we are moving towards the elections later this year. Of course, this is something that is has been developing for quite some time now. And, of course, it's even more interesting since, of course, uh, we've seen uh, the new uh, Democratic presidential candidate um, taking uh, this uh, particular position officially also on Thursday with the Democratic Convention also coming to an end um, and this is where of course uh, the uh, former presidential candidate and the former president Joe Biden handed this over to Ms. Kamala Harris and she is um, going to be somebody uh, who's going to be taking the lead for now and might be making history if she is elected as president as being the first female U.S. president. So we're going to be taking a look at what this means particularly for the people of the U.S. and then of course take a closer look at the campaigns that are being run both by her and the Republican presidential candidate Mr. Donald Trump who's also also been a former president and so we're going to be taking a look at what this means now that this shift has taken place as to who his rival was earlier um, uh, somebody of course uh, who was much older who uh, of course we saw a lot of talks being centered around his age and his ability to perform uh, Mr. Biden of course and then with a much younger and female candidate um, who's talking about various aspects with reference to her past records and what sort of things she's bringing to the table she's also mentioned of course uh, that uh, the the essence of a presidency is going to be centered around making uh, the United States a place for everyone to be able to compete and to succeed, focusing on the middle class, particularly talking about the tax cuts uh, that will affect more than 100 million people of uh, America. And so we're going to be taking a look how that is, of course, in contrast with what we've been seeing coming in from Trump's side with reference to, of course, the way that he wants to move forward um, with increasing tariffs for more fair trade relations and what he said in terms of the deals with different countries as well and of course many other issues that are going to be centered around this uh, particular race. There is also of course concerns with reference to what sort of stances um, uh, Ms. Kamala Harris has been taking particularly in terms of foreign relations even though of course we know that that might not factor in much in terms of the key states that at the end of the day most likely will be the ones deciding the future president of the United States. So we're going to be taking a look at all of this in our first segment of the show today. Our next one is going to take a look at the law and order situation in Pakistan where we've seen unfortunately uh, that 12 brave policemen have been martyred and laid to rest um, earlier uh, in Rahim Yar Khan and this is of course something very very saddening um, and something of course um, that we uh, condemn deeply in terms of what has happened and we stand uh, with the resolve of our uh, security personnel police and armed forces um, as of course, unfortunately, they seem to be the targets of uh, any such elements in the country who are out there to uh, damage the current situation and of course um, bring the law and order situation um, uh, not under control. So we're going to be taking a look at why this has happened and what particularly has to be done with reference to the way that these bandits exist and they operate and the kind of attack that they've made. And of course, then the way that these uh, security personnel and uh, the police forces need to be also um, uh, equipped equipped with, with the new technologies in order to defend themselves as well and what it means then for them to be on the battlegrounds and of course give their lives for the motherland. So we're going to be taking a look at this at the end of the show today. For this and more as always in the studios I've been joined by senior analyst Farooq Badafi and Raja Faisal and we've also been joined online by Dr. Adil Najim who's a senior analyst regarding our first segment on the US. Thank you very much Dr. Adil for joining us and being a part of the discussion and I'll start first with what you have heard uh, from Ms. Kamala Harris is of course she becomes the um, official uh, presidential candidate for the Democrats. And so I want your understanding in terms of the kind of rhetoric that she's given so far, particularly in terms of uh, the middle class and, of course, with the way that she wants to cut taxes for them. And then, of course, speaking about how that is um, something in contrast with what uh, Mr. Donald Trump intends to do and how he's taking the country backwards with his project 2025. Uh, what do you make so far of the kind of statements coming in um, from Ms. Kamala Harris and the campaign that she's been able to pull up uh, thank you thank you very much Anna. Uh, so i think we've we've uh, seen Dr. the Ali swings Ali of american Ali politics Ali. as they always are uh, and we've seen the dramatic swing from uh, the last time we talked it seemed Dr. like we, we are unable to hear you so if you if you may unmute yourself and try again uh, okay i i think i am unmuted but uh, tell me can you hear me now yes, yes we Absolutely. can hear you now please go ahead so uh, thank you for 
much for having me. My, um, uh, uh, I think we've seen the swings of American politics. I've seen, I think what we've seen in the last few weeks is how American presidential elections work, which is this long roller coaster ride, which has been changed this year because the candidate got switched by one of the parties in the middle. Uh, but that's what we are seeing. Uh, last time when we talked on this show, I talked with you, it seemed like Donald Trump had already won the election. People were talking about it, especially in Pakistan, as if it was a done deal. Um, at this point, if you were only to take the last two days, um, it might seem the opposite. It might seem as if Donald Trump is totally missing, nowhere to be seen, and now it's um, uh, Kamala Harris's to, to win. Um, I don't think it is as clear as that, but certainly at this point, as you would have expected after a convention, uh, Harris has 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 a clear edge in the public perception. She's been on television all the time. You've seen you know a whole week of her essentially being shown live uh, throughout. So you would expect that sort of bump. In terms of your question, my contention would be we know very little about uh, what Kamala Harris Harris believes in. Um, she is has projected herself very consciously as the typical. Democratic candidate. So she's taken all the regular, all the known Democratic uh, ideas, and she has projected herself and her team has projected her as the candidate of those ideas, whether it be the Supreme Court, whether it be abortion, whether it be women, uh, whether it be gun control, whether it be borders, right? And, and that is to be expected. The interesting thing I think this week to ask is, where is Donald Trump? Right, mm -hmm. and, and and that I think we will see unfolding again because now that the convention is over, we will see a new dynamic. But just to end on a very very short note, I think one of the questions that you will see till now, Kamala Harris was defined as not Trump. I think now she will face some tougher questions on where do you actually stand? With Joe Biden, we had 50 years of experience. We knew where he was, like it or not. Harris will have to define who Harris is. Absolutely. And uh, Dr. Alan, I'm glad you said that. And I'll come to, of course, um, Mr. Trump's campaign as well. But I also want to focus um, at what you said earlier, because, of course, initially it was not Trump. But now that she is going to be facing all of these challenges, many, um, including former presidents, have actually expressed that, that concern as well, saying that the road is challenging ahead for Ms. Harris all the way to the um, presidential elections as well. And that, that, that is something, of course, that she'll have to uh, look into. And so in terms of what she's been talking about and what lies ahead, uh, do you think that she can face the kind of um, questions that perhaps not only uh, the Republicans, but also, of course, very importantly, the Democrats themselves will be asking her and uh, be expecting of her? And then, of course, with uh, reference to the swing voters, of course, that at the end of the day uh, have a huge impact on these elections. And Dr. Adil, if you can also uh, define the role of media right now as uh, it is being blamed by Trump's side, that, of course, the mainstream media, they are actually taking the side of uh, Kamala Harris and uh, they are not, uh, uh, you know, giving uh, much of the airtime to whatever the activities <coughs> of uh, Trump are. So, whereas if we look at the social mediums, especially X, it is, of course, going in the favor of uh, Trump himself. Yeah, I, I thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, my, I'm smiling because... I, I don't take the media very seriously, and I don't think anyone should. I think media in Pakistan also takes itself very seriously, and media in the U.S. also sometimes does. So uh, if Trump is saying that, that's to be expected. If he were doing well, he wouldn't say that. Uh, the media is divided. I mean, you know, if you looked at the coverage in Fox News, you would have thought you were in a totally different convention than if you had seen it, for example, on MSNBC. And and that's the case. I think what, what you're hearing from the Trump camp is that they are very surprised at what has happened in the last weeks. I, I think the Democrats are also surprised. The swing that happened right after Joe Biden's decision, I think, took everyone by surprise. Certainly it took Mr. Trump by surprise, and I would say it also took the Democrats by surprise. And by that I mean the Democrats expected some bump with the Joe Biden story having go, gone away. I don't think they expected or anyone expected this big a sigh of relief. Because suddenly, the answer to who, who, who other than Trump looked so different, right? And the, all the energy of 
people thinking, you know, what people were thinking was, oh, God, this country has these two people to offer, Biden and Trump. That was replaced by the sense, okay, there seems to be a more normal looking politician on the bench, right? By normal looking, I'm saying people who, someone, Kamala Harris here, who was talking the regular issues in regular ways, in regular political language. And that was the relief, and that was the wind behind the sail we saw for her till now. I think the surprise, at least for me also, was it was surprising how Trump suddenly sort of went away. It was kind of like he wanted to fight Joe Biden, like it was personal. I think he was, he's been really offended by Joe Biden leaving because in some ways he wanted the badla, he wanted the revenge from Joe Biden. And he has not yet come to grips with how to run against uh, Kamala Harris. I don't think that will last. I think very soon we will see some sort of a reaction from Trump. Uh, I'm sure his advisors are, are telling him to do that. And that will also change the media discussion, right? So on the media one, I'm not, I, I, I don't want to not answer your question, but I don't think it is as serious as that. The media was covering her because she was new. So you always cover the new story. Right, absolutely. And, and Dr. Adil, I, I want your take then on, on, on what I asked earlier as well in terms of will Ms. Harris be able to hold her ground then till the elections given all of the challenges ahead and whether or not this novelty value, not just in terms of media only, but in terms of the way the public is actually also viewing her, will die down. And Dr. Adil, you have very smartly uh, put it forward that of course uh, if we talk about Trump, Trump is... Uh, less committed to fight against uh, Kamala Harris. Rather, he would more committed to, of course, uh, fight against uh, Biden. Can we say that that factor is because that he believes that whatever uh, the fight he had against the establishment, American establishment or deep state, he considered Biden to be part of that deep state and Kamala Harris not to be part of that? And Dr. Saab, I know that... Uh uh, it, it, it might be too much that I'm also adding to the plate, but I'm just opening uh, my seg segment. Uh, my question regarding uh, the enthusiasm that you referred to, especially g given that it is uh, guitar root enthusiasm that we have seen so far, uh, how do you actually uh, compute uh, the uh, enthusiasm uh, around uh, Tim Walls, the running mate? Because it seems to be a perfect American story, right? Yeah, I, I think all of those are great questions, right? It's, this is why it's fun to be on this show because because the questions are so well informed. All of those those are great. Uh, let me try to be succinct. Uh, so first of all, um, sir, sir, on your questions, will she be able to handle it? She certainly hopes that she will. The Democrats hope she will, but we will find out. And the first place we will find out is in the immediate post-convention sort of battle of the ads, right? Now the convention is behind you. The media will also ask different questions. So we will see it in that because the questions will not be as broad as they've been. They will start becoming precise. They will take her speech and take those broad statements and say, what do you mean by this? People are already doing this. The really important place where we will find it is the debates. Right? That's why the debates are important. And so we will see that 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 uncovering. Uh, I, I think Vessel's question is exactly right. I, I, I do think in some ways pinning this establishment label to Kamala Harris is more difficult. Uh, Joe Biden was American politics, right? For 50 years, there was no American politician who's been everywhere in everyone's memory like Joe Biden was. So that was an easy charge to pin, whether it's right or wrong, but for, 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 for the Trump camp, it was an easy charge. The problem with, with Harris is that, in fact, the charge on her is opposite. The charge on her is that she isn't got, hasn't got the experience, she hasn't been around, who is she? What can we say about her, right? Even when Bill Clinton or Barack Obama spoke about her in glowing terms, they were so broad, right? She worked at McDonald's because there wasn't a history. So pinning the establishment label becomes difficult. So probably the Trump camp will find something else. I am surprised. I'm surprised that they haven't actually taken on this. She has no experience bit. In fact, you will see that when Harris speaks or her team speaks, they always point out how much experience she has. In her speech, she keeps saying, I went to Ukraine. I did this partly because she knows 
the case she has to fight against is that case. And 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 finally, um, excellent question. I think, and, and I'm glad you raised this here. Um, I think the story of this week is not just Kamala Harris; it is the vice presidential candidate. I did not know who he was. I mean, I, I knew the name, but I didn't know much. Most Americans didn't. But it seems to, till now, unless something comes up, it seems to be like the perfect applehood and mother pie choice. It couldn't have been a better choice uh, for the Democrats, right? A football coach, your sort of neighbor, ordinary Joe. Uh, he 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 looks like someone who wants to give you a hug. He looks like someone you want to give a hug. He just sort of is that archetypical uh, image of what you you would want. And importantly, and I'll end with this. Therefore, he becomes a very stark con uh, contrast to the candidate that Trump has picked for for uh, vice president. So. All of this is, it's very, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. But I will say, last time when I was here, I said, Hanuz, November Duras. November is still far away. I'll say that again. November is still far away. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Adil, I also want to uh, focus on uh, the kind of uh, measures that Ms. Uh, Harris pointed towards, particularly in terms of tax cuts uh, for the middle class or more affordable housing and, and certain agendas that perhaps were also taken up by uh, Mr. Joe Biden earlier, but then were uh, rejected by the Congress. Whether or not that's something that you think uh, she will be able to pull through and whether at the same time, while Mr. Trump talks about tariffs in a different manner with, of course, getting fairer trade deals and better deals with different countries, which one will fare better in the public eye? With, when it was Trump versus Biden, you had two people who you had a very clear idea of what they would do, right? Particularly because both had been president and both were very blunt about what they would do. At this point, you have one candidate, you have a very clear idea of what they would do. The other candidate has to prove, Harris in this case, uh, what they will do. So saying uh, I am for middle class taxes, there's no surprise. There were, in all of those things, there was no surprise. That is what any Democratic candidate, every Democratic candidate would always say. The question now is, what do you mean by it, Ms. Harris? Right? What do you really mean by middle class tariffs? And the question you asked, how are you going to pull it off in a Congress that nearly certainly will not have the type of majority you want? even if it has a majority for you, right? So those are the questions she'll have to confront. I do not know whether she'll be able to pull it off. I think one of the arguments would be that we've heard this before. Biden said this. So why should we believe you when we didn't hear? But, but in fairness, that was not her task at this point. At the convention, your task is not to give the details. At the convention, it is to revive your base, to ensure them that they have a viable candidate to get them excited about you, to get them excited about the election again. On all of those, I think, checkmarked, they've done, they've done what they needed. But now the questions will become different, the discussion will become different. Right. Um, Dr. Adil, there's also, um, of course, when we talk about um, any aspects of foreign relations, I understand they might not factor in the presidential race. But in terms of Gaza, we have seen that there has been um, a more sort of firmer or clearer stance uh, that we've seen, at least in, in rhetoric, in terms of uh, what people are quoting um, in terms of what Ms. Harris has said as freedom or self-determination, more importantly. And while these, of course, may only be words, we know what the U.S. is trying to achieve um, with the bridging proposal with Israel. And she has also very clearly said that she is um, going to stand um, in Israel's defense and that she, of course, believes in securing Israel. So I want your take in terms of how this is going down, especially with the people who who have been protesting for Gaza uh, in the United States and whether or not these words uh, will matter when people think of her. But uh, And then she was spoke very clearly in, in support of Gazans as well. Uh, and that is also very interesting. And has she actually successfully gained uh, the uh, sort of support of the people, especially uh, youthful people who were on the roads against Biden and of course uh, she's someone who's uh, actually voicing against uh, this war and she wants a quick end to this war. Uh, excellent questions. If I, if I can just take one sentence on the previous question and then come back to this very important question. Uh, one thing I will note without commentary is how much 
the big big the people who were at the democratic convention the people who were all over the democratic convention for the first day it was biden for most of it it was harris but the person whose shadow was the greatest on the democratic convention still remained trump uh, much of miss harris's speech was to prove i'm not trump right the rest was here is why you should be afraid of him so what i'm saying is that shadow will not go away on the gaza question which is the most important my honest blunt answer to all what all three of you has asked i do not think that the people who were protesting are any happier today than they were with biden having said that i'm talking now about the people who are protesting my young students who are in camping in universities uh, 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 americans who who think that this is this is truly a genocide i don't think they heard the type of clarity that they were looking for having said that there is a difference of nuance between biden who has a lifelong record on israel and on harris who tried to throw some words some ideas that would make you seem that she is going to be slightly more concerned also about gazans i think for those who are really protesting who are worried about those children who are being who are being killed etc will not find it enough but partly this is what you found in all of the speech right her trying to please everyone on everything so first you say how much of a friend of israel you are and then you say by the way yes on on gaza and freedom and and so on and so forth and then by the way we will not have the palestinian speaker come and speak so that is what i'm saying this and and in in fairness that's what conventions do but what you had here was i have something for everyone uh, right by and the way uh, uh, by the way dr sab uh, since you were actually talking about palestinians not being allowed on the stage uh so i asked somebody and they actually quoted uh, something from veep uh, where she uh, selina mayer, mayer says i am a political leper and i am also an emotional time bomb so here is the great idea put me on a stage <laughs> <laughs> so i i i i think and this is this is an american this is an american election she she is doing what she thinks will vote win votes in america and we in pakistan should not think that she was her job is to do what we think is right but this is a divisive international issue so i entirely you are 100% correct she did what uh, what they did what they thought would work with that crowd but to your question i do not think the ones who are protesting who are putting their own lives in danger are going to be jumping with joy because of this even if they do see that nuance which they probably do Dr. Adil, if we uh, you know look at the uh, politics of uh, U.S., of course it had uh, very ugly stories as well, uh, which were highlighted. Of course, if we talk about the uh, you know President Clinton, he had that Monica uh, kind of uh, you know aspect Lewinsky. attached, yeah, attached to him, and then of course uh, he was uh, considered as someone bad. Uh, here, of course, so far it hadn't been that ugly in the campaigns but still we had to go through very odd kind of words or slurs used against each other are we expecting that the uh, willy brown factor uh, of uh, you know camilla harris because camilla harris back in 90s early 90s of course she was uh, uh, you know uh, she was in a relationship with uh, 30 years uh, older than her who was speaker of Californian uh, uh, Assembly and that was of course uh, uh, you, you know Willie Brown it can that factor be brought in as well as we know that Trump is of that kind of uh, uh, you know reputation that uh, he can bring anything on the table and will it work and will it work yeah that that right to the question is very important so will it come nearly certainly every election even before trump every election this is about the time when it comes right so now now sleeves up now the fight is going to get dirty and it, nearly certainly 100% it will in fact it already is right i mean trump saying is she black or is she indian and things like that uh, were clear and 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 even this question has been raised so will they come they will come i suspect that the ones we are talking about are not the things that will come uh, i can bet you there are people 
uh, certainly in Mr. Trump's team, but probably also on the Democratic team, who right now, as we speak, are digging in their basements for some dirt somewhere, trying to figure out something that 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 can do. And in this world of social media, that's even more uh, easier to do. And with the characters we have, that is even more likely to do. Will it work is the question. I think what will have to, if things will work, they will be different. Right. They, I mean, in a way, the you know, the Monica Lewinsky story, which was such a big story then, wouldn't even fly today after everything we've seen with Mr. Trump, for example. Right. So so the standard has changed. Right. So the standard changes. So the story that will stick will have to be a different story. It could be about Harris. It could be about uh, about uh, about her, her vice president. The one thing we know, surprisingly, is nothing seems to stick to Trump. I mean, the magic of Trump is that in some ways his stories have already been so bad that his his crowd is not going to to. It's not that they don't believe it; they totally believe that that things might have happened, but they also believe in this redemption thing that it doesn't matter. The question is, will the same will the same leeway be be given to Miss Harris? Then I think not. I mean, Trump, in that sense, for his supporters is their leader call it cult or whatever but their relationship with trump is a very different relationship that democratic voters have with harris harris is their candidate trump is someone that they are willing to blindly follow i think therefore yes all of that will happen there will be things that will coming be coming up i do not know what those things are i don't think that that uh, that affair with the mayor is going to stick because that's been tried and i think that's already internalized it will have to be something else and and, and something else will come the question is that the usually you know dirty trick versus dirty trick wouldn't play uh the in, in some ways, at this point, I come back to where I was earlier. I am interested in seeing, is Trump going to get excited about this election again or not? Because right now, he was tweeting yesterday, you know, as if he was in his basement watching this speech and just throwing out slurs on, on, on tweets. But will he come out the way he seemed to have come out against Biden with spirit in this fight? And we will see that. I suspect he will. But at this point, he's not. And Dr. Zab, uh, given that at this moment when we look at numbers, they are uh, practically dead heat, uh, the question is regarding the endorsement that is coming and that is of uh, Bobby uh, Kennedy Jr. Uh, if, is it going to actually skew the race in, in favor of Donald Trump because that is where he, he, is, he seems to be headed? Uh, will that actually add to the numbers of uh, Donald Trump at all. And, and Dr. Adil, if you can also highlight whether the aspects, I mean, in the recent speeches we have been uh, seeing, Donald Trump suddenly started talking about in favor of hijab, number one, <coughs> and number two, uh, staunchly against mm. LGBT, especially related to the uh, you know military service uh, LGBT uh, uh, sort of, uh, he has been condemning it. And uh, can we say that it is out of desperation that he's uh, touching on these lines so that media can give him more time and uh, it is some sort of, uh, you know, that he's banking on this vote? And Dr. Adil, uh, before you actually answer these two questions, I also would like to welcome in the debate Ms. Miriam Sabi, who's a senior journalist, and she's also joined us in the debate. Thank you very much for being part of the debate, uh, Ms. Miriam. And we'll come back to you as soon as Dr. Adil finishes answering these questions. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, good questions again, and I'll, 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 I'll again uh, sort of link them. Is it desperation? It probably is, but with Mr. Trump in particular, but in politics in general, they're going to say whatever they think will win the vote at this point. So partly I think the LGBT and other issues that you will see is there is a, a, a very large number of people. Uh, in a way, what, what Trump is, I think, appealing to is sort of this anti-wokeness, if you will. Whatever it is, let's not go into that. But there is clearly a, a sense, uh, there is a crowd for whom that is uh, uncomfortable. Uh, and Trump wants to win that crowd, right? And he wants to become their candidate. So the reason that I want to link this to Farouk's question about the numbers is where were we and where we are, right? We were at, they both had Trump and Biden, but they both had their supporters and it was 
And then you had the debate and everything, and Biden's supporters started having fight, doubts. So they fell off. And that is what made us seem as if Trump was rising. I think we are back to where we were at the beginning of this election. The Democratic voters are now have a candidate they can be behind. The Trump voters clearly have a candidate they think they can be behind. Therefore, the debate necessarily comes back to those who are in the middle. Will the Kennedy voters swing the vote? Probably not. It seems more of them are pro-Trump than they are pro-Biden. But it also seems that their number is such so small enough that it doesn't swing the election. So more of them are likely to go towards Trump. But is that enough to swing things? We do not know and probably not because he has been losing steam is my sense. I think what is happening and what we are seeing, and I think that's a good thing, is both will now, they have consolidated their, their votes and their own votes, their own base. And now they are after that middle. Right? I go back to, I think, what I've said before in this program earlier. To win, Harris has to win the people who voted for Biden four years ago. Right? That's the yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Adil Najim, for being a part of the debate and sharing your views with us. It was a pleasure having you, as always. I'll come to you now, Ms. Mariam, with reference to, of course, what we've discussed so far, and I hope that you were able to catch some of it. But, of course, your perspective is important in terms of what is happening on ground and what you, of course, understand in terms of what the public is really looking at in terms of both of these candidates, and especially after the convention, uh, what they think of uh, the new uh, candidate coming in from the Democrats and whether or not uh, the kind of challenge she's of course uh, going to be facing now moving on she's prepared for and is she actually prepared for the September uh, bout when it comes to of course uh, the debate between both of the candidates yes um, thank you so much for having me on it's an honor to be speaking with you all um, there is a lot of excitement now in Pennsylvania that is where I am on the ground I am actually running for state representative in the Pennsylvania General Assembly. Um, if elected, I would be the first uh, South Asian Pakistani Muslim woman in the Pennsylvania General Assembly, um, inshallah. So we are working really hard on the ground here. Um, there was a lot of, um, you know, if people were worried when Biden was at the top of the ticket, especially after the debate and how he did very poorly. Um, people were very concerned, but with this new um, change at the top of the ticket with Kamala Harris um, at the top of the ticket, there is a lot of excitement and a renewed energy. Um, and I think if you guys watch the convention, you, you can feel that. Right, absolutely. Um, and Mariam, all the best to you, of course, um, as you move forward. Uh, I'd also like your take, particularly in terms of uh, the kind of campaign that uh, potentially we can now see coming in from the Republican side as well, um, in terms of, of course, uh, the kind of rhetoric we've seen so far. And now that this, uh, of course, campaign um, also um, has proven Ms. Harris to have some sort of ground um, in this presidential race. So what exactly will uh, the entire campaign by Mr. Donald Trump be centered around. So far, of course, he's lashed out at her on various occasions and called out um, a lot of things in terms of um, whether or not she'll be able to really pull off the things that she said or lead the country in the right direction. Of course, Ms. Harris has also said the same. But in terms of what will be the center focus um, of the Republican campaign, what do you think it will be? And by the way, uh, 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 once again, congratulations on returning. And I, I hope you win. I, I see that you are going to win. But uh, regarding uh, Republican ticket and their, their positioning right now, we have seen two things today. While Kamala Harris was give, uh, giving her speech, we saw that Donald Trump was on the southern border. And there he was interacting with the people and he was expressing concerns regarding immigration. And the second thing is inflation. How big these two, two things are as factors in election and are they going to actually help the Republicans? Yes, um, those are very, very good questions. Um, Kamala Harris at the convention tried to paint herself and what she said is she will be a president for all of the people. So she had a very unifying message um, that you know was a positive, message and they're they're trying to bring joy and hope and you know all of those 
themes back into the election. Um, at the same time, um, it is going to be challenging. It is going to be very close. So um, it, it is it is going to be challenging, though Kamala Harris is doing better than uh, what Biden was doing in the polls. Um, so the numbers are looking a lot better for her. But um, I think Donald Trump, what he likes to do best is to attack his enemy, um, which he is going to do. So um, and I think he has already started doing that. Um, and then the two, the other point you made, um, the economy and the border, um, illegal immigration definitely are two very important issues in this campaign. Um, and the Republican Party is going to be um, emphasizing those two um, issues. But at the same time, what we saw with the Democratic Party is they are emphasizing freedom, um, not going back to Donald Trump, moving to the future, having you know a brighter future, um, and working for all of the people, especially the working class people, um, and and all of the people. So um, they are, you know, two two messages, and we are going to see how they resonate with the people. Um, both are powerful messages: uh, reproductive rights and our freedom and democracy in the United States is another very important issue. Um, people are scared with Donald Trump the way that his supporters stormed our Capitol on January 6th. That was a very um, upsetting day for Americans. Um, so it, it, they are also, a, a segment of the population is scared what Donald Trump may bring to um, the American politics. Is, is violence going to come back? Is our people going to attack our democracy or our parliament? Or what happens if it, he loses by a small margin? So yeah. in America, we're not used to that kind of uh, political violence or that kind of uh, people not accepting the, re the election results, which I know is common, unfortunately, in Pakistan or other countries. So um, it is like that dual, you know, uh, the, the two different narratives. Uh, one is for freedom, for democracy, um, and the other one is about, you know, focusing on immigration and, and um, economy. Yeah, uh, Mariam, I'm glad that you have highlighted, uh, obviously, you know, uh, the human rights and uh, uh, the right to protest as well. Uh, we need to highlight that as well, because if we look at the youthful Americans, they have been coming on roads almost uh, since a year. Uh, of course, owing to the situation of Middle East and the way uh, they were handled on the roads of U.S. by the Biden administration, uh, Everyone knows that, of course, Kamala Harris was hand in glove with Biden at that time because she was the vice president. How it is being looked at by the youthful voters and how it is going to be crucial for the de Democrats to, of course, uh, you know, uh, portray a different picture in front of the people. And whether or not, yes, Miriam, yes. Uh, it's going to make a difference in terms of the words that Ms. Harris has recently used and, and the kind of rhetoric uh, that, that she has also made use of, uh, especially talking about the Gaza situation, um, calling for, of course, freedom and self-determination, which hasn't been said before. Um, but, of yes, course, yes. Um, in, in light of the actions of the U.S. as well, what sort of meaning it holds, particularly when they're also, of course, defending Israel, also talking about a bridging proposal with Israel. And so how does does all of that actually is being perceived? Yes. Um, so I think um, the, the youth are more excited for Kamala Harris. Um, I think in her they see someone who will be more compassionate, um, who will speak out, um, and, and, you know, who, who is trying to work for peace. So I think that, you know, there is hope that, um, you know, they see more hope in her. Um, and I think that that will hopefully be a, a positive step. Miriam, sorry, where was where was that hope since a year? Because all of the U.S. youth, especially students of the universities, they were on the roads, and that hope was, of course, never to be seen anywhere. And uh, and yeah, could you I'm uh, very, very sorry to cut you? Uh, could you could you also speak to the fact who else might offer a better solution to Gaza? Because we know that there are few people, Trump is pro-Israel, very aggressively so. We know that Kennedy is also pro-Israel, very aggressively so. 
and Jill Stein so always has been a Trojan horse, so to speak. So every other option leads to Trump, who might actually give more power to the uh, Israeli government rather than Palestinians. Yes, um, I, I, I think uh, Kamala Harris would be, uh, you know, a better choice in terms of, I think, you know, people see her as having a little bit more, you know, compassion. Um, and, and, and yeah, I, I don't know uh, if we can expect the same from, from Trump. Um, but again, it's, it's very important to work towards a two-state solution, to work for peace, um, and, and to kind of, you know, make sure that um, we are working towards a peaceful solution. Right, but essentially, Miriam, but essentially, Miriam, how are they different? Um, yeah, it, I, I think we're going to learn more about the, the different viewpoints on the debates and how Trump may handle things. Um, but I, I don't see, you know, and, and we've seen some interviews of, uh, of him where he called Biden, um, you know, a Palestinian, and, and that was trying to insult him. So, um, yeah, I, I, if you saw the debate, that's that's how he uh, kind of addressed the situation. Um, so, yeah. It, it, time, Miriam, Miriam, but at the same time, isn't Biden the same president who said that you don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist? Yeah, uh, I mean, the American policy, of course, is for a two-state solution. It is for, um, you know, like that that's not going to um, change. Um, and we are trying to, you know, work for peace. But yeah, there it is a complicated issue um, right now with, you know, a, a lot of people are, are feeling that frustration. But I think with the change at the top of the ticket with Kamala Harris, um, people are excited. Right. The youth are excited, especially the minorities and um, different, you know, segments of the um, population. So um, I guess we'll, we'll wait and see how, how things go. But thank you so much for having me again. And um, I would love to keep you updated. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you, Miriam, for joining the debate and being part of the show today. We're going to, of course, quickly move on uh, to our next segment as well with reference to what has been happening in Pakistan. And, of course, we've seen that the law and order situation, unfortunately, is something that uh, we have been dealing with. But it is because of the, the resolve and the sacrifices that have been given by our security forces and our police personnel that, of course, have made it possible for everybody else to be at peace. And, Faisal, let's start with you with reference to what has happened in Rahim Yaar Khan. Of course, we have 12 brave policemen who have been martyred um, and, of course, been laid to rest. Uh, but in terms of the kind of actions that can be taken against these decades or these bandits, I want your uh, perspective in what possibly can be done to really equip and improve the on-ground situation uh, and have these police personnel be better prepared to deal um, with such incidents. Because, of course, we have full confidence in their resolve and their preparedness uh, to deal with these situations. But isn't it also important to equip them um, with, with the right um, uh, ways forward, especially in terms of new technology or ammunition or other aspects that are needed? Yes, Anna, that's a very good question. And, of course, when we talk about, uh, you know, uh, the special forces, uh, of course, the elite forces, they are involved in uh, this operation as well. And they are, uh, of course, trained by Pakistan's uh, uh, army and uh, the light commando uh, training has been given to uh, them and mm. they are there as well and at the same time my sources tell me that of course uh, Pakistan army is always ready to of course uh, send in the rangers uh, with along with the police ranks who can of course fight them out this is a serious situation of course uh, you know these vehicles the convoy it was uh, hit by uh, the uh, uh, you know bandits and uh, that place is of course uh, under the focus of punjab police uh, and now we can say that uh, in coming days the uh, you know at a, at a larger context the operation would be planned and all of these bandits they will be eliminated uh, very quickly from that place but this uh, you know, particular incident, I mean, it could have been avoided uh, if uh, there were, uh, as you have mentioned, that the uh, proper tech and uh, the up-to-date uh, kind of, uh, you know, drone surveillance and these kind of uh, uh, if equipments were used by police, then, of course, it would have been quite easier uh, 
uh, to, of course, uh, fight them out. But uh, this uh, unfortunate uh, incident is another example that uh, all of the security forces, uh, be it uh, Army, be it uh, uh, you know, Air Force, Navy, uh, police, all of the services, or, mm. uh, security services of Pakistan, they have, uh, of course, given their share of uh, blood uh, to safeguard the country. Right. And this is another uh, example that we are seeing today. Absolutely, and of course, um, we truly, of course, appreciate and honor their, their sacrifice. But at the same time, we, of course, want uh, to save our lives as well and, and to make sure that the people who are on, on duty are also safeguarded. And Farouk, in that respect, then, um, we, of course, have these measures that have been taken now in the aftermath of this attack. And, of course, uh, the investigations and the operations will continue. But what exactly uh, can be done in order to make sure that the system um, is better prepared um, uh, and to prevent any such incident to happen uh, in the future. Thank you, Sanam. Uh, let me first uh, condemn this heinous crime uh, against Pakistan's heroes who were defending the country. Um, secondly, I think that the best people to answer that question would be the system itself. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not the system, so I won't be able to contribute much. Right. Thank you very much, Farooq, and thank you, Faisal, for joining us and being a part of the discussion. That's all that we have from the debate today, and of course, we're now going to be seeing you tomorrow.